Yo guys, what is going on? JPS back for another video. And today we're going to be reacting to why Europeans are slimmer than North Americans. An observation while traveling. So let's get right into this. Hit the like button guys, hit subscribe. And here we go. I, I It doesn't take a genius to see this. Like when you're in the United States, as someone who lives in the United States, there are a lot of people who are unfortunately on the heavier side. There's Our obesity rates are through the roof. We don't have the healthiest of foods. But I'm curious to see why Europeans are slimmer than North Americans. What are the factors leading to that? So, let's get right into it. Hi everyone, this is Jackie from Smith Family Travels coming at you with another travel video. This time it's not a travel tip video, but kind of an observation of our travels. This time I'm going to talk about why I think the average European is slimmer than the average North American. Okay. We've been to quite a few European countries like Greece and Spain and Portugal and France and we've noticed that the average North American is much bigger than the average European. We kind of knew that Europeans have a supposedly much healthier lifestyle than the average North Americans but it became really apparent to us when we we're actually traveling to these places. So I'm sure that there are many other scientific factors that might contribute to the reasons why you know the average European looks healthier or slimmer than the average North American but I'm just going to talk about our observances as we travel. One of the major things we notice is that they walk everywhere. They walk to school, they walk to work, they walk yeah. to church, they walk to the grocery store, to the cafes. And you know, we live in the suburbs in Canada. And so we don't do a lot of walking. We hop in the vehicle and we go grocery shopping and we go to work and we drive the kids to school. There's a lot less walking in, I would say, the average city in North America than the average city in Europe. I remember when Patrick and I went to Paris by ourselves, so no kids and we checked into the hotel. We asked the hotel clerk if we could walk to the Eiffel Tower from the hotel. And he said, sure, it's about a 10 minute walk. And we're like, okay, that's doable. So he gave us the directions to the Eiffel Tower. We're walking and we're walking and we're walking. <laughs> and we don't see the Eiffel Tower in 10 minutes or 15 minutes, but we are following his directions. So, you know, we stop somebody on the street, we ask, you know, are we in the right direction to go to the Eiffel Tower? And they say, oh yes, just, you know, it's just a five minute walk. And then, <laughs> you know, they just assured us that we're on the right path. And sure enough, it took us maybe 20, 25 minutes to get to the Eiffel Tower. Now we're pretty quick walkers, you know, we're not slow walkers and we didn't have the kids with us to slow us down or anything. And we didn't get lost, but the 10 minute walk turned into a 20 to 25 minute walk. And we've had a- That is true. People will say, just give you like a really rough estimate that's usually on the shorter sides of things if they're used to doing that a lot, like even with driving or, or yeah, I can see exactly what they're talking about. Happened Damn. to us in other cities as well, where, you know, you ask somebody where the Louvre is and they're like, oh, it's just 15 yeah. minute walk <laughs> and it turns into a half an hour walk. So my advice to you is if you're visiting a European city and anyone tells you that it's a five, 10, double it, minute walk, triple it. just double that time <laughs> because their 10 minute walk is not our 10 minute walk. That's based on our experience. Walking is such a part of their lifestyle that they can't seem to imagine why you would take a bus or take a car when you can just walk easily somewhere. I so agree. Last year we were in Florence and we had seen all the beautiful basilicas and duomos and we were ready to go home. So I went into a store and I asked one of the employees there where the nearest bus stop was. So he asked me where our Airbnb apartment was. So I told him around, you know, which area it is. And he said, oh, it's just, it's just a 10 minute walk. And he goes, it's, it's easy to get to. And I said, no, we want to take the bus. Can you tell me where the bus stop is? And he looked at me like I had two heads and he refused to tell me where the bus stop was. So I finally had to say, you know, I have a six year old, he's really tired and we're traveling with my mother-in-law and her knees are bothering her. And he's like, okay, okay, okay. The bus stop is, you know, and then he directed us to the bus. So I walk out of the store and I'm dying with laughter. And I say to Patrick, can you believe the guy refused to tell me where the bus stop was because he wanted us to walk. And he must have thought, you know, these lazy North Americans, you know, they can't walk 10 minutes and I knew it wasn't gonna. 
the only reason she's saying North Americans is from is because they're from Canada. But in reality, I think the problem is is exemplified in America more so than Canada. I'm not even Canadian, but I just think America is is, is the worst example of this in, in Western society because our cities aren't built for public transit or being very walkable. You have to have a car. 90% of Americans have to have a car to be able to get to work, to be able to do their things because we haven't built infrastructure that is pedestrian friendly. That's the, the, the truth. We have interstates running through cities. We have interstates running through everything and highways everywhere and really poor public transportation. So walking and using the trams and trains and this, that's not really an option here, which I can see why that would lead to it's easy to uh to neglect that, but walking is very important. That's what we're meant to do. And if you're not doing that very often, you're definitely going to get fat. So I hadn't even thought about that. I was more so thinking about how big our McDonald's portions are, which I'm sure plays into it. But the walking is probably the biggest for sure. It's going to be a 10-minute walk. <coughs> I knew it was going to be a 20-minute walk because we took the bus there and... I knew that that was not a two minute bus ride, so it certainly couldn't be a 10 minute walk. <laughs> and another thing we observed is their small meals. Their meals are small. Every single meal is small. So I remember the first time we were in Rome and it was just Patrick and me, and we stayed in a hotel with free breakfast. So we're like, <coughs> okay, you know, we're gonna save some money. We can have the free breakfast. Well, a European sized breakfast is very different from an American or Canadian sized breakfast. You're not getting bacon, eggs, and toast, and waffles, and all that <laughs> stuff. You're getting uh, pastry and coffee. You might be able to get two pastries and coffee, and that is their breakfast. So I was quite surprised about that, but you know, it kept me full for a few hours, and that was fine. And I also noticed, you know, the portion sizes when you're in restaurants are very small. If you're getting spaghetti in Rome, you're not getting a huge plate. You're getting a small plate and it, it actually fills you, but uh, it's not a North American size portion. Mm. And I think also they, they linger when they eat. They sit down in a restaurant, they sit there for a couple of hours, they enjoy the food and they enjoy the company that they're with. And I've heard that you, if you eat slowly, you'll get the message that you're full as opposed to eating quickly wow. and eating too much and then feeling bloated. So take your time, relax, and they eat dinner much later than what we're used to. So I would say breakfast and lunch are usually about the same time as what we're used to. Sometimes lunch is much later than what we're used to. Breakfast is pretty much the same, but dinner, eight, nine o'clock i would say is the average dinner time in many european cities and wow. you know we eat dinner between 6 and 6 30 at home but yeah. then i have a bedtime snack around i'd say 9 30 10. so i'm really eating four meals a day i notice that when we're in europe and we're eating dinner seven eight o'clock at night i definitely don't have a bedtime snack because i'm way too full i've eaten my dinner much later and so i'm actually eating less when i travel in europe i know i should try it at home but i haven't done that yet because <laughs> i really like my bedtime snack this was just a quick video on why we think <laughs> Europeans are a little slimmer than the average North American. If you have any comments... Dang, bro. I, I'm. This is going to be a complete lifestyle change for me, too, because like her... Well, right now, my eating schedule's completely messed up because school's out. But during the school year, when I have a structured schedule, it's just, it's pretty similar to that. Like, Americans, I'd say the average dinner time is somewhere between 5.30 and 7.30. That's everyone. Most of the people will fall between that time. And it's true. We do, especially me. I have this problem where I'll eat super fast. I'm not worried about what's on the plate. I'm worried about what I have to do next while I'm eating. I'm just thinking about what's, you know, I'm never consciously thinking about what I'm eating or taking the time to eat. You know, at dinner, sometimes it'll be enjoying company and stuff. That's when I think in, in the United States, people will actually sit down and eat. But for breakfast, lunch, it's never about that. And even when it is dinner, it still is very rushed. And you'll have, this is very common at restaurants in the United States when you're receiving service, is that 
they will take your plates even if you're not done or they'll come by and say you know would you like to check try and get you out in a specific time frame depending on the style of restaurant so i think that really speaks to our rapid pace when it comes to meals and and lack of enjoyment and really taking in the meal and and the company more importantly so i'm excited for that change i honestly think i'm gonna lose some weight in europe especially if i'm able to access a gym or exercise consistently which i plan to so it's gonna be it's gonna be a a really great trip i'm excited to visit guys um with that being said i will catch you all in the next one hit the like button hit subscribe and peace